The story of my life remains written on these pages. But my fate has always been my own. Every deed, every choice, every person I met made me what I am. Could I have taken a different path? Could I have found a different calling? Altered the very course of history? And what price would I have to pay? Greetings fellow YouTubers and welcome back to The Life and Suffering of Sir Brante, where we continue the story of uh, Sir Bran Brante, a young nobleman and a judge whose career started uh, on a very good note. Uh, we are now uh, at the first third, I think, of uh, the peacetime chapter and uh, let's see what awaits us. So, previously on Sir Brante, uh, as we began uh, this fourth and longest chapter, uh, you can see that we uh, already triggered uh, one of the special events. Uh, we are known uh, as protector of the people, the people of Anizot know and praise us as a defender of the common people's rights. Our career and justice are perfectly balanced, uh, so we... We are doing pretty well, and uh, our house, uh, our family, does not look that bad either. Uh, we have a high unity, uh, good enough wealth, and a strong reputation only one step, one point away from uh, getting a necessary amount of reputation to uh, be ennobled by the sword. Okay, let's see. It is another day at the prefecture. A secretary peeks into my office with a message from the prefect. There is a new case uh, he wishes me to handle. Okay, I walk to Sir Elborn's office. I must say that uh, I also uh, made a promise to Elborn, as you can see here. I gave uh, him a promise to support him in his fight against the tyranny of the nobility. Okay, uh, to my surprise, he happens to have another visitor already. Oh, and there is a graceful figure sitting across from my immediate superior, none other than Octavia Milanidas. Hmm... Okay, her appearance today is modest and formal, with a high-necked dress and a strict bun. Mm-hmm, interesting. I bow to the prefect and the noble Arknian lady. Mm-hmm. This matter can brook no delay, Baron Elborn. The young judge may well wait outside. <laughs> Sir Elborn insists that I come in and take a seat. Worry not, Brante, you are not interrupting at all. Lady Milanidas, I was scheduled to meet with Sir Brante at this very hour. I regret to inform you that your visit was perhaps somewhat unfortunately timed. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, stealth insults. Okay, the young Arknian lady rises from uh, the chair and now stands tall, elegant and indignant. You are out of line, Sir Elborn. Archduke Milanidas has graced you with a representative from his dynasty, and you will listen to what I have to say this instant. The Archduke has expressed concern over your manner of governance at the prefecture. You have always been headstrong and eager to infringe upon the freedoms of your own noble estate. But now it appears you find it acceptable to conduct proceedings against our own loyal subjects. Our dynasty has already seen many loyal nobles of the sort arrested or faced with punishment in court. Where will this lead? Do you mean to enforce your lowly laws against us, Arknians? Do not forget that those laws were written to keep lowborn humans in check. Our lives have always been governed by noble honor and tradition, as well as the blood tide that is our heritage. Our only justice is the court of honor. The only rule above us is that of our sovereign, the emperor and the twins. Our only duty is to our kin and our forefathers. This is what Elborn spoke about over, uh, earlier, um, high nobles and Arknians accept only the court of honor above them, they do not accept the civil court. My ancestor Char Milanidas himself granted the boon of nobility to you humans. It would be most unwise to make me regret his decision of old. In the name of Archduke Milanidas I demand that you end any and all proceedings against our subjects at once. Hmm. Okay, Sorrelborn acknowledges uh, her speech with a calm smile. He shows no trepidation and no fear. Hmm. Lady Milanidas, 
The twins have graced the blessed Tarknian lineage with a boon of long life, yet the world can be quick to change at times. The laws of the Empire now govern the nobles of the mantle and even the nobles of the sword, along with the common estate. This particular change is not as recent as it might seem. The laws of the Empire are the decrees of the Emperor himself, the twins chosen supreme sovereign. His laws are his will, which is, as you said yourself, the only rule above us. And that means all of us, from a highborn Arknian to the lowest commoner. Presently, the Emperor's representative in our province is Overseer Gaius Tempest. Like this prefecture in its entirety, I am simply obeying the Overseer's will and the laws of the Empire. And pray tell me, Baron Elborn, who is your own sovereign and protector? He is none other than my father, Archduke Milanidas. You swore him an oath of fealty and vassalage. It is your duty to follow his word and will. Or do you wish for the Archduke himself to address you directly? I tell you, cease this harassment of our loyal noble subjects at once. I will not leave until this order is carried out. Why, Lady Milanidas, I am afraid this is quite impossible. As a servant of the Empire and Imperial Overseer Gaius Tempest, it is my duty to enforce the law. Now, if you will excuse me, Sir Brante and I have urgent matters to discuss. Octavius silent suddenly turns toward me. But I believe the young judge has more in him than blind obedience. Surely you are able to distinguish a rightful claimant from a threat to the province, are you not? They are both waiting for me to speak. What can we do? We can support Elborn and worsen our relations with Octavia and uh, the Archduke, but uh, improve our relations with Elborn and Gaius Tempest, basically side with the Overseer. We can side with Octavia and assert the right of the Archduke's daughter to defend her noble subjects, and it will drop justice, actually, I guess because Elborn will be forced to um, uh, stop uh, proceedings against nobles uh, of the sort. Or we can defuse the situation. Octavia knows who I am, and uh, this gives me an opportunity to defuse the dispute and keep the Prefect safe from her ire. Hmm. So, um, where does Brian Brandt stand in this dispute uh, uh, of law against uh, traditions, of uh, imperial law against noble privileges? Personally, uh, Brand thinks that, um, of course, uh, all estates should obey the law. Uh, and uh, commoners should get protection from the imperial law. But he also thinks that uh, there is a grain of truth in Octavia's words as well. Uh, nobles and Archneans uh, should settle uh, the matters between themselves in the Court of Honor. Because uh, the Court of Honor is basically a judgment of our ancestors. Commoners should get protection of the law because commoners have no honor and no ancestors to call upon. But nobles who have long dynasties uh, and uh, who uh, have a noble honor and noble heritage uh, should be able to uh, settle the matters of this honor, the matters between themselves, in the court of honor. That's what I think. I disagree with Elborn that the Court of Honor should go. I don't think so. I think the Court of Honor should remain as one of the foundations of our noble society, but uh, the law should govern uh, the lives of uh, all estates nonetheless, and the disputes between commoners and nobles should be resolved in uh, a civil court, because, once again, commoners have no honor. Okay, um, I think the best option here will be to defuse the situation. I do not want to side uh, openly with uh, one or the other. Okay, um, hmm. I take advantage of this connection to reduce the tension. Uh, Lady Octavia, mm, truly the Archduke has every right to look after his noble subjects. Uh, I would never expect an ancient dynasty to abandon the loyal nobles to their fate. Mm, having said that, I shower the Archduke and his dynasty with praise, including his brilliant progeny who has deigned to grace the Prefect's office with a visit. Ho <laughs> ho! Uh, suck ups. Mm, okay, I casually mention my encounter with Lady Octavia at the fencing tournament in Eterna. I have to admit, Brante, for a human you fought valiantly indeed. I have witnessed some of the best Archean swordmasters at work, and yet your fighting uh, piqued my curiosity. I am deeply uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate, I'm deeply honored to hear such kind words uh, from you, Lady Octavia. 
Uh, still, uh, though the Archduke's words carry great weight, uh, Sir Elborn has no power to decide the matter. After all, he is but a humble servant of the Emperor like myself. Perhaps it would be more prudent to take this matter to the Emperor's overseer, Gaius Tempest, who is also an Archnian of noble lineage. I also think that uh, what uh, laws should be followed and what laws should uh, should be obeyed is ultimately uh, up to the other, for the overseer to decide. The overseer should decide what laws and what courts are supposed to um, uh, function in his province. I'm firmly on Gaius Tempest's side here. Octavia winces at the mention of Gaius Tempest because the Emperor's brother took away her noble family's right to represent imperial authority in the province. <laughs> to a certain extent, you're right, Bran Brante. I cannot help but admit it. We Archneans ought to avoid involving uh, humans in matters of supreme authority. It is still my wish and intention that Sir Elborn present us with an answer, but if he absolutely must learn the will of Gaius Tempest beforehand, then so be it. But do not tarry too long with your answer, or you risk angering my father. She rises elegantly from her seat, and before she leaves her eyes rest on me for a moment. She bats her eyes charmingly and addresses me with a gentle smile. Oh, nice. <laughs> I think she uh, appreciates how well I uh, handled this whole situation. Elborn pats me on the shoulder. Unbelievable! I never expected you'd be acquainted with Octavia Milanides. My thanks, Brenda. You bought me some time. If you hadn't intervened just now, I'd have had to defy the law and end all cases against nobles who serve the Archduke. We'll see what the Overseer says about, about this now. Archduke Milanides is testing the prefecture with his daughter, otherwise he would have asked me to visit his palace personally. He is showing caution, which means we still stand strong, at least for now. We will continue our service to the law without regard for the outmoded ways of the past. Well, don't be so harsh about uh, traditions, uh, Sir Elborn. I think uh, they are the pillars of our noble society, and uh, we shouldn't dismiss them so, e so easily. Nonetheless, I um, am firmly on your side uh, uh, on this matter. Like, if nobles of a sort committed crimes against uh, uh, common people, uh, then uh, they ab absolutely should be persecuted and uh, sentenced according to the rule of law. I mean, this is high politics, and the prefecture still has plenty of cases to resolve. Let's get back to our work, shall we? Okay, uh, he hands me a new case file, and I head back to my office. Nice. Oh, Elborn likes us very much. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice, nice. Passion. Mm hmm. Okay, uh, the repercussion of my most recent encounter with Octavia soon manifest themselves. A letter bearing the seal of the great dynasty of Milanidas arrives the next day. Inside the envelope I find an invitation to Castle Serpenverde, the Archduke's residence. Uh, let's see where it is, actually. Uh, okay, we have uh, our city here. Uh, ah, there it is. Serpenverde, a castle in the middle of a Magran Wastes that serves as the family seat of the great Milanidas dynasty. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, visiting the Archduke is a great honor indeed. Uh, I uh, dress myself and uh, put myself into good shape. Nice. My family cannot help but notice my preparations. Mother watches nervously as I make sure everything is ready for my journey. This odd invitation has me worried, my son. Be careful in the Archduke's castle. You are still of lowborn origin. Archnian attention spells danger to people like us every time. Remember not to displease them or the Milanidas will grind our family into dust. I'm sorry, mother, but I am no longer a lowborn, so I can handle myself. Thank you very much. Okay, the carriage takes me away from the border walls of Anizot. It takes me a full day to reach Serpent Verde, along the dusty sun-scorched high road. Mm-hmm. Interesting. To preserve my family's honor, I must make the best possible impression. The provincial powers that be will be watching my every step, and so will Octavia, with her cunning grin. <laughs> okay, as the sun is about to set, I uh, finally spot the dark colossal shape of Castle Serpent Murder. 
A carriage clumps the narrow serpentine road to the castle gate, soldiers of the Archduke's guard approach me, and I present him with the invitation. Okay, the guards give the signal to open the gate. I am now inside the walls of the Archduke's castle. Uh, the courtyard is strangely empty. The guards show me to a servant who guides me to a room reserved for guests and leaves me there to wait. I follow the servant uh, further into the dimly lit corridors of Serpent Verda. The castle is still silent. There is no noise, no music. It seems completely uninhabited. Uh, this is very strange. The servant stops in front of a pair of massive doors made of black wood. This is your destination, he gestures silently. I enter an enormous room, its walls covered in portraits and ancestral relics. In the very center of the room is a towering throne carved of, of black wood. Upon the throne I see the delicate silhouette of Octavia Milanidas, clad in a black velvet dress decorated with silver. The Arknan lady beats my approach. You are here at last. Are you surprised, Bran? <laughs> How old? You didn't think my father would actually summon you to an Arknian castle, did you? Or are you truly that naive? How sweet of you. No, it was I who summoned you here. We are completely alone, I must say. Portraits cover the walls, portraits of Arknians with dark eyes and jet black hair. Octavia's ancestors, the Archdukes of Magra. Hmm. Allow me to introduce you to my family. Family? This is a human by the name of Brandt. What do you think of him, father? She casts a defiant glance at the portrait of the Archduke. Then she removes a glove from her hand and casts it as well. It hits the great Archduke right in the nose. Octavia laughs at that. And uh, the tall walls echo her voice. I beg your pardon, uh, Lady Milanidas, but uh, pray tell me, why have you summoned me? Because you have caught my attention. I noticed you, even when you were somewhat younger than you are now. And when I started seeing you again and again. I've caught myself thinking about you quite often. And so I've decided that I wish to... possess you. Uh, eh? You will become my companion. Other humans will envy you, but no one will dare to curse you. My name will open any door you like. In return, you will satisfy my every whim, and I will do with you as I please. Octavia rises from the throne. The hem of her dress lifting up to reveal her elegant, slender leg. <laughs> you know the history of this throne, yes? My ancestor Charmilan just used to sit here during the rebellion of Magra. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Charmilanidas made decisions that transformed the entire empire all from this very seat. And now it's gathering dust in this vain glorious art gallery of my father's. Now come to me, human. So Octavia wa waits for me to do her bidding. One does not argue with an Archean, since the dawn of the empire they have taken whatever they wanted. If I submit to this Archean woman, if I become her sexual plaything, basically, everyone will know I am in the good graces of Lady Milanidas. As a human, what more could I possibly dream of? Uh, very, very tense situation. Okay, Octavia arches her back on her father's throne and waits for me. Her slender hand beckoning me closer. Okay, what can we do? We can submit to her. Uh, she will become our patron. Uh, we will do as Octavia wishes in return for her favor. Uh, increase our reputation. We can insist on being treated as her equal because she is intrigued by us, we can do with this, and we can grow close with her. Uh, or we can reject her and uh, insult uh, her and leave her castle. Mm. I guess for an imperial nobleman who wants to get his family ennobled by the sword, the most practical thing to do would be to submit to her, to sacrifice my uh, sexual dignity uh, and uh, become her boy toy, uh, become her plaything, in exchange for reputation. That uh, would be the most uh, practical thing to do, the most sensible thing to do. But we are gonna make Brand's life uh, 
a little more difficult, but also much more exciting. I look Octavia straight in the eye. The fates have blessed you indeed, Lady Octavia. You are blessed with your high station, noble birth, beauty, elegance, intelligence, diligence. All noble virtues are brought together in your lovely shape. And last but not least, you are blessed with love and admiration of any mortal who dares to set his eyes upon you. Any mortal man is uh, doomed to fall in love with you as soon as he gazes upon you. I too have been in love with you ever since I was young. Ever since we uh, have met uh, on this ball at the capital in Cornelius Tempest Palace. I have been enchanted by your beauty and grace. And every chance encounter with you is uh, my treasured memory. I... I'm afraid to hope that this feeling is mutual. I'm afraid to pray. I'm afraid and desperate to hope. There is no greater honor to me than your affection. However, though you stand high above me in all virtues and uh, in uh, uh, the nobility of your blood, I am not a lowly human myself. I too am of the noble estate. And... Uh, I cannot accept humiliation. I cannot sacrifice my honor for the sake of this love. If I must face uh, your ire for my defiance, so be it. As a nobleman, it is my duty to endure it. So I say this. If you only want me as your plaything, as an obedient toy to amuse you, then, then strike me with all your wrath. But if you are ready to see me as a man and a noble, there will be no greater pleasure, no greater joy on this earth for me, but to reciprocate your feelings, your affection. The choice is yours, my lady. I humbly await your decision. My speech ends and I steel myself to face her wrath. But to my surprise, Octavia seems lost in thought. Nobody denies me. I'm not used to this. You are a remarkable human indeed, Bran Brante. I have noticed this ever since we first met. Your words echo in my heart. You do not follow the usual rules. Any other man would have been groveling at my feet by now. Perhaps you can be my escape from this stifling, sickening world. If such is your wish, my lady, I will be your escape. What is your decision? So be it. I choose a human as my lover, and I care little for what the aristocracy of this twins-forsaken province has to say about it. I will take this as far as I like. But you will be safer if our affair remains a secret to the world. Now come to me. My sweet human. I draw closer to Octavia on the throne. She reaches out for my face, caressing it gently and carefully, as though touching a human for the first time. Maybe he is. Maybe she is actually. Maybe she is touching a human for the first time. A moment passes, and suddenly her arms wrap around my neck and her legs lock around my torso, and she pulls, pulls me closer to her with all her might. I do not resist. Her embrace leads me to the throne. So how do you like the seat of a great char Milanidas? Just a piece of wood, don't you agree? Uncomfortable too. I don't know, I feel pretty good right now. <laughs> I feel great, my lady. <laughs> but maybe it's just your legs around my torso. They make this comfortable. 
Luckily, it's spacious enough for the two of us. Octavia's ravenous lips find mine as her hands free me from my fashionable attire. Attire, attire, attire. No, it doesn't matter. Her entire body shivering with excitement. My body is shivering with excitement too. <laughs> I caress her skin tender and sure. I commit her to memory, studying her, trying to understand her. Octavia's eyes are dark as the starless sky, sparkling with delight from my sweet transgression. Why does she seek this pleasure with me? Why would she humiliate her ancestors and her very dynasty by having an affair with a human? Maybe I'm just that cool. <laughs> Octavia gently pulls my head up by the chin. She kisses me passionately and her lips start moving down my half-naked body. Oh, 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 oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, the twins. Oh. Her inhuman passion swallows me and overtakes me until the vast throne room of the Milanidas dynasty echoes with the lust of her ecstatic moans. Then there is silence. Octavia curses my back slowly and playfully pushes me off the throne. The Arknians watch me from the portrait, <laughs> their faces as dispassionate as ever. Thank God <laughs> these guys are just portraits and are long dead. <laughs> uh. Octavia returns to me at dawn, now wearing a modest black dress, her hair in a formal bun. It is time for you to leave, Bran. The Archduke will return to the castle soon. I will visit Anazot now and again. Several estates there belong to me. We will meet there, safe from prying eyes. As you wish, my lady. I uh, am eagerly waiting our next rendezvous. I leave Serpent Verdom with, with my head spinning and my heart racing. <laughs> what did I just do? I just... I just slept with the Archduchess. I just, uh, I just banged the Arknian beauty, the most beautiful Arknian in my province. Oh, oh my gods! Uh, the day it takes to return to Anizot passes like a single moment. When my family asks me about my visit, I evade the question. No chance in hell I will tell my family what happened. No, no, no. Okay, from that day forth, my heart aches sweetly, yearning for Octavia's letters. And when it is time for a brief. Uh, date, the two of us disappear to one of her estates and give in to our secret passion. There are days when my love and my lover seem but an illusion, something gone forever, but soon another note arrives and the affair continues, only to be cut short again for, a, for an unknown time. I have stolen the heart of the most beautiful and high-born Arknian lady of Magra. Only one nagging thought casts its shadow on my love. What will be the price for this insolence? I don't care. I forge my own destiny. I forge my own path. I will love whoever, whomever I want. And uh, yeah, our relationship with Octavia Melendez has become romantic. Our encounters are rare yet passionate and Octavia is deeply sympathetic with us. Now this is what I call a noble lifestyle. Taking bribes, protecting commoners and uh, banging the archduchess. Nice! <laughs> we have started an affair with a daughter of Archduke Milanidas. Actually, if you if you insist uh, to be treated, insist on if you insist on being treated like an equal, uh, Octavia is very nice, very sweet. If uh, if you submit to her, she is very cold and very uh, haughty and uh, basically treats you like shit. But uh, if you um, insist on being treated like an equal, she actually. Uh, admires your indomitable spirit and respects you and loves you deeply like i love uh, this uh, part of uh, the noble uh, uh, route the noble uh, playthrough like to grow close with octavia very nice brothers in misery oh what now okay uh the fights between stefan and gloria are not as fierce now uh my job takes up all my time i see my parents and siblings less and less often Sometimes I don't even know what they are doing while I deal with a constant stream of duties. Yeah, being a judge is hard. Okay, uh, I head out on urgent business this morning. I take one step out of the gate and run into a uniformed gendarme. Captain Linat. Brent, Brent, your presence is requested at the prefecture dungeon. Okay. We have your brother, Stefan and Nathan Branta, in a cell. They were arrested last night at the Steiner's Inn. They asked us to send for you. In a cell. In the dungeon. 
Okay, the cells are cold and damp. The guards lead me to the bars and behind them I see Nathan huddled in the corner. My younger brother is unshaven, more disheveled than usual and reeking of wine and filth. Drunk again, I see. Near the cell I see Stefan grimly sitting in a chair. Uh, okay, uh, huh? Nathan lets out a whimper and Stefan cracks a bitter smile. Uh, the sheath on my brother's belt is empty. Hey, where the fuck is the sword I have given you, Stefan? Oh. There you are at last, Bran. Have a look at our younger brother. Yesterday he got drunk in the company of some dubious fellows. They are commoners, yet they dared to surrender to pleasure. They started a brawl, wrecked the inn, and harassed the waitresses. As soon as I heard, I rushed to save this drunkard from shame. Nathan covers into the corner. I walked in and demanded that Nathan come with me, but his cronies wouldn't let him go. That's not true. You just grabbed me by the collar and dragged me after you. You nearly suffocated me. Shut your mouth, cur. Cur? <laughs> so, brother, uh, they seem to have some sort of sect. They all shouted defamations against the twin gods, and one of them grabbed me by the arm. I was forced to skewer this heretic with my sword. Oh my god. Uh, I hope a lesser death will teach him never to lay his filthy paws on a nobleman. He was just trying to talk to you, Stefan. Silence! When the gendarmes barged in, and here we are. I have been accused of an unlawful murder. Apparently, the new laws allow killing a commoner only if he attacks first or so wields a weapon. They say that in the event of an insult, I am supposed to file a complaint with a prefecture. So now they are going to seize my sword for a whole year. What a shame. And it's all your fault, Nathan. Dude, you just killed a man. Uh, with lesser death, but still. <laughs> you just killed a man for touching you. <laughs> okay, uh, Stefan gives the bar a furious kick. Nathan covers his face with his hands in despair. Bran, brother, you are our only hope. Get me my sword back and get us out of here and fast. We have to bury this sordid affair as deep as we can before anyone finds out. Save our family from shame. Okay, uh, what choices are unlocked from the sword? Uh, refuse to help? Uh, sucks. Sucks, 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 sucks. Uh, we will lose our reputation. Mm, two points, actually. And uh, naturally, we will worsen our relations with Stefan and Nathan. We will uh, leave our brothers uh, in their time of need. We can ask Father for help. Mm, bad idea, because it damages both our reputation and our unity. What else can we do? We can use our authority. Our career is high enough. And we can use our position as a judge to free Stefan and Nathan, but it will drop justice because we abuse our power and disrespect the law, naturally. Oh, I am starting to regret uh, this promise I have made to Elborn. I promised that I will always side uh, with the law and make just verdicts, but this... Uh, these are my own brothers. Like, mm. I get that they broke the law, but... Shit. Shit, 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 shit. Not good. Not good at all. Basically, I either I uh, leave my brothers and uh, basically let them suffer the punishment, Nathan especially, because as a commoner, I uh, suppose his punishment will be more severe than Stefan's. Uh... I can ask father to act dishonorably uh, and uh, basically put uh, an additional weight on his conscience, or I can act dishonorably myself and break my promise to Elborn. <sighs> okay. I guess uh, I will do what must be done. Gendarmes. Give Stefan Branta his sword back at once. He has not broken any law and must be freed. As for commoner Nathan Branta, I will personally cover the damages the inn has sustained. There is no reason to keep the son of a noble family behind bars. But, but your honor, Sir Stefan ran that man through right before our eyes. The law says... <clears throat> I'm sorry, Captain. Um... Do you claim to know the law better than me? A professional judge and a noble of the mantle? 
That commoner, a heretic, as I suppose, dared to assault a born nobleman and grab his arm. I uh, eagerly ask you, Captain, to remember your position and obey my order at once. The gendarme nods obediently and returns Stefan's confiscated sword. I knew I could count on you, Bran. You aren't just my brother after all, but also a nobleman yourself. You know that honor is always paramount. Yeah, I know. What's your deal? What's your excuse? How dare you to put uh, our family's reputation at such a risk? If I was not around, what would you do, huh? Huh? <sighs> Stefan. And your hair-triggered temper. You nearly doomed all our efforts to get nobility. Okay, uh, Nathan is let out of the cell, nice. Actually, yeah, uh, back in my childhood I have promised uh, to Nathan that uh, nobody will hurt him when I am around. He is grateful to me because of this, so my promise to Nathan is more important than my promise to Elborn. Sorry, Augustine. Family comes first, sorry. Okay, the elder brother takes the younger by the scruff of his neck and pulls him to the door. I managed to conceal this, the disgraceful occurrence from all of my relatives, with the exception of Sir Elborn. The Prefect is very displeased with my abuse of power, but needless to say, he does not order his nephew Stefan to be returned to his cell. Yeah, he is very displeased. Augustine, should I put them back? Should I, uh, should I have uh, left your own nephew in a jail and uh, cover him with great shame? Eh, you are displeased. <sighs> yeah. Acting with honor and kindness is more important than acting with accordance uh, of the law sometimes, you know? Augustine, you should know that. <laughs> Stefan starts lecturing Nathan at home. From now on, there will be no more drinking bouts or other nocturnal exploits. Who are those rogues you've befriended anyway? Stop shaming this family. Yes, yeah, Stefan, uh, the same goes for you. Stop shaming this family, dude. Stop killing commoners uh, <laughs> just because they touch you. <laughs> what the fuck? You're so worthless, at least let ours go about their business in peace. Nathan is not worthless, Stefan, stop it. Anyone can get drunk from time to time. Do not uh, humiliate your brother like this, he suffered enough. Do you understand your blockhead? <sighs> Nathan remains silent, staring despondently somewhere above him. Anyway, our relations with brothers is uh, improved because we saved them. Augustine is pissed, yeah. And justice drops. Yeah, 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 I disrespected the law. Blah, blah, blah. My eloquence is uh, improved <laughs> somehow. I guess because I admonished uh, Captain Linnat. The case of Father Mark. Mm -hmm. My most recent year of service at the prefecture has seen an increase in litigation on crimes against the church. More and more people are joining the ranks of the new faith in Anizot. The movement began with destitute beggars who had nothing to lose, but for years now many well-off commoners and new nobles have been joining the fold. People say the leader of a new faith in Anizot is Father Leonard, the abbot of a temple at the Silver Tree. The city's leaders would love to expel him, but he is too highly regarded by a common folk. So, uh, I think it's a good time to say what Bran thinks of um, a new faith. Uh, do we have uh, Father Leonard here? Uh, no, we don't. Uh, nonetheless... Uh, Truth be told, uh, Bran thinks that uh, New Faith is, uh, is a bunch of demagogues. Because basically, there is no metaphysical proof. There is uh, no proof that what they say is true, that uh, the lots are falsehoods. Uh, the lots have actual mystical powers, like uh, the marks of the lash uh, on the commoners' backs. Uh, never heal unless they change their lots. Uh, I have felt this changing in my lot uh, when I uh, was uh, uh, baptized as a nobleman. And also, uh, Father Leonard and his followers uh, constantly juggle the words. Uh, one day they say that uh, the lots are falsehoods. The other day they say that, uh, yeah, there are the lots, but common people uh, shouldn't suffer. But if the lots are falsehoods, why there should be a common people at all? Why there should be commoners, common estate? Like, it's very contradictory. Uh, like I said, as cruel as old faith is, uh, it's it at least gives a comprehensible picture of the world. Why things are the way they are. Uh, this new faith thing is just uh, uh, 
a bunch of uh, pleasant platitudes, a bunch of pleasant lies, uh, in my opinion. It is pleasant to hear to, it is pleasant to dream about this ideal world where uh, all people and Arknians are equal, but we are not. We are not equal. Some people are just uh, smarter, stronger, better educated, born into higher position in society than others. Like, that's the way things are. It may not be fair, but to deceive people with pleasant platitudes about, oh, no, no, the gods, they will guide you to the peak of a shining pillar if you uh, turn to your heart and seek uh, the love of the twins inside you. Just pleasant platitudes. Anyway. Anyway, um, complaints and cases of defiance of one's lot keep pouring in. Every day somebody is reported by the neighbors for heresy. Uh, however, me and the other judges have no choice but to reject most of these cases. As a secular institution, the prefecture has no authority when it comes to crimes against faith. Only the church and the inquisition have any say here. So basically, nobles have their own court, the court of honor, and the church has the inquisition to settle uh, the matters of faith and violations of faith. In the middle of an hour busy day at the prefecture office, the door suddenly swings open. A tall gendarme uh, walks in uh, and bows to me. Oh, Captain Linnet, <laughs> nice to meet you again. Captain Linnet reporting, your honor. My boys finally caught Father Mark, the dreaded apostate heretic. The prefect told us to take him to you for judgment. You, bring him in. Bring him in indeed. Okay, they bring in a short, stout man wearing a worn, dirty priest's robe. Priests wear the sacred symbol of the twins, a cross within a circle, but this man does not. Father Mark, isn't he the founder of the Markian society we have visited back in our youth, back in the capital? Uh, this uh, religious teaching that uh, teaches that uh, we should find pleasure in the here and now, we should uh, find pleasure in uh, secular things. Okay, uh, forced to sit before me, this odd-looking priest is nonetheless strangely undisturbed. This is him, Father Mark, in the flesh. We caught him trying to preach the teaching of his, smack at me in the middle of a drinking hall for the lowborn in the Grey District. Some guy took offense and called for the genders, and we got there right away. Yeah, his cult of rejection of the twins has expanded tenfold over the past several years, with nobles, commoners, and even other priests joining his flock. The Inquisition has hunted this heretical apostate for years, but Father Mark has always eluded capture, until now. Some say he has powerful protectors. Here are statements from people at the establishment, your honor. Okay, let me see. Okay, Father Mark isn't just preaching, he is openly defying not only the lots, but even the twins themselves. Hmm. Our mark teaches that the gods have neither design nor purpose for us, so we are under no obligation to serve them or prepare our souls for the hereafter. Actually, that sounds very similar to what Bran believes in, because the Bran, Bran also believes that uh, the gods uh, have not a specific purpose for any of us, they just uh, gave us uh, uh, the breath of life, we will to live and struggle, and our lots, and that's all. That's all they give us. That's uh, the, uh, ex the highest expression of their love. Hmm, interesting. Okay, I put the papers away. Okay, Father Mark, um, please answer me honestly. What was the subject of your sermons? What were you trying to convince your listeners to do? He answers with a dazzling smile. <laughs> as a judge, it is your duty to enforce secular law. You know as well as I do that I have broken no such law. I am a priest, my friend, and in the Empire priests are allowed to preach. I was preaching the proper way to live one's worldly life, for this is the only existence we have. I told my listeners not to waste their lives serving those gods. The twins surely love us, but alas, their love violates us as much as their law. This entire world is proof of that. I see my words upset you, but I'm afraid you can't judge me guilty for that. Here's why. You see, mine is the priestly lot if the judgment of a church is to be trusted, which means that only the Inquisition Tribunal may find me guilty. So you can hand me over to those black-clad thugs, but alas, you will get absolutely nothing in return. The Inquisition wants to light the pars in every corner of Anizot, and all they need for that is me. As soon as they get me, the Inquisitors will tell the Prefecture to step aside and start enforcing the law themselves. Is that what you want, my friend? So what are you to do with me? Well, let's think about it. As a secular judge, you can't judge me guilty, but giving me to the Inquisition will weaken the Prefecture. And so, my friend, everybody will be better off if you just set me free. Trust an old philosopher, it's better for me, better for your prefect, and better for you as well. 
must say, Father Mark, whatever I think of your teachings, uh, you are a very well-spoken man. That I give you. Uh, the gentle captain smiles knowingly at these words and whispers a few words into my ear. Uh, I say the old heretic is right, your honor. If he's still got the priestly lot, he is the Inquisition's problem. It's too dangerous for the prefecture to meddle in church affairs. And strictly between you and me, if the reports I've been getting are to be trusted, this here's Mark's been rubbing elbows with Patriarch Cassius himself. Oh, Patriarch? Letting him go might get us on his good side, and Sir Patriarch is a very wealthy man. Thank you, Captain, for your advice. Okay, uh, uh oh. A uh, door to my office opens without warning, and there's a young woman at the door. Uh, clothed in a black robe and bearing the telltale silver seal of the Inquisition. I am Sister Jan, your honor. I serve the order of the Inquisition. That much I can see. Oh, this is the young acolyte girl from the temple at the Silver Tree, the one I saw during that school visit. Your men did well to track down and arrest Father Mark. Splendid, we've been hunting this false preacher for a long time. As I am sure you know, priests may not be judged by secular laws, your honor. Mark has denigrated the twins and called for the people to reject them. He has broken his sacred vows and defied his lot. He will face the tribunal of the Inquisition for his transgressions. The man before you is a great threat to the people of Anizot, Judge Brante. His words lead people astray, his speeches doom them to eternal suffering at the foot of a pillar. Only the church knows the way to end his heresy. You will hand Father Mark over to me at once. Why is everybody so demanding of me? Why is everybody pushing me around? Okay, what can we do? We can actually judge him. Uh, we can uh, find a way to judge Father Mark guilty in a secular court. Uh, this will do good for justice, and I guess uh, this can be a part of our promise to Elborn. But e this is the beautiful thing about this game. Justice is not necessarily a good thing. That's an interesting part, because um, sometimes upholding justice, upholding the law, means uh, judging a man who is not guilty of any particular crime. Or at least uh, is a decent man who does not wish harm to any ever anyone, like Father Mark uh, cl clearly is. He seems like a decent fellow who just wants to um, tell other people what he believes in. We can hand him over to the Inquisition, which is a shitty option all around. We can set him free, we have enough scheming to do so. Or we can prosecute the case with the Inquisition, uh, participate in Father Mark's trial, and uh, we raise our career that way, but still drop justice because we uphold this uh, obsolete institution uh, of uh, the Inquisition Tribunal. Once again, I deeply regret that I made this promise to Elborn, because uh, if I am to uphold this promise, I, uh, I have to judge Father Mark and find him guilty. But I really don't want to do so because he seems like a decent man. I myself have visited the Markian society back in the capital and uh, they seemed like good enough guys. Um, he just wants to spread his beliefs, that is his right as a priest, actually. I guess uh, his sect uh, brews some discontent here and there. I think Nathan uh, uh, made acquaintances with this sect and uh, that's why he's so drunk uh, all the time. But Mark's philosophy is um, not actually about pointless hedonism or getting drunk all the time. It's more about like um, finding pleasure in the here and now. So, mm, no. No, once again, sorry Elborn. Uh, you may believe in the power of the law, but I believe in uh, acting with honor and kindness and uh, relying on my own conscience uh, more than I believe in uh, relying on written laws. And my conscience uh, demands that I set this man free. Sorry. And uh, sorry, not sorry, Jen. Piss off. Yeah, actually, piss off. Legal action is required, so blah blah blah. Legal action takes time, please wait. And make haste, your honor. When it comes to protecting the faith, my order will brook no delay. Blah, 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 blah. Be gone. Okay. Look, Father Mark, uh, I must say I am deeply interested in uh, your philosophical views, but uh, unfortunately I'm in no position to engage in uh, debates with you. 
I would gladly meet with you under some other circumstances and discuss with you the matters of uh, mortal realm and the gods and the design and uh, so on. Right now, I declare that you have not violated any imperial law with your sermon. Uh, you are a priest, you have the right to gospel, to preach. Uh, and I am no inquisitor, so I cannot judge the truth or falsehood of your teachings. You are demonstrating a will of your own, my friend. Well done, your honor. This is your first step toward freedom. Yours, not mine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Handing me over to the Inquisition would spark far more than a single pyre. The Inquisitors would gladly break every Imperial law you have. You have protected the authority of the Prefecture. Well done. Okay, stop uh, showering me with praise. What we are about to do is... Uh, Captain Lenat, where you are? Come here. Okay. Father Mark is to be taken to the Prefecture Jail. And mysteriously disappear from his cell during the changing of the guards at night. You understand me, Captain? Mm-hmm. I will close the case before then, so there will be no need for a manhunt. If Inquisition wants this man so badly, then they uh, will have to catch him themselves. I fill out the necessary paperwork, no violation of Imperial law found, case closed. Then, fi then I file the aborted case against Power Mark away in a box. Easy peasy. Oh crap, the Inquisition learns of this only days later. Sister Jeanne bursts into my office beside herself with rage. You, you call yourself a judge after this, Sir Branta? How dare you defy the Inquisition? Protecting a heretic like Father Mark shows you for the fool and apostate you truly are. We had him, but thanks to you, the Mark and heresy will continue poisoning the souls of those whose faith is weak. I am sure, Sister Jeanne, that the faith of uh, our good people of Magra is strong enough to withstand such temptations. Hundreds and hundreds will follow Father Mark to the foot of the pillar in the hereafter. You will be responsible for the eternal torment, Sir Branta. It is sad to see uh, a member of a priest lot so skeptical about uh, the faith of uh, her fellow humans. I think people are better and uh, stronger in will than you give them credit for. And rest assured, the Inquisition will not forget this. The Inquisition will not forget this. Yeah, I returned home exhausted by a long day of threats and accusations. What awaits me back home, however, is a pleasant surprise. A treasure trove of fine wine straight from the cellar of Cassius, Patriarch of Magra. The wine came with a letter. Sir Branta, please enjoy this wine. Savor your earthly life before the twins. Snatch it away as well. Well, thank you, Father Mark. May your words find its audience. I hope you will find those who would be faithful to you and take your teachings to heart. Okay, our career drops. But our wealth increases drastically. We are now affluent, an affluent family. Nice. The wine is that good. <laughs> what is it made of? <laughs> How can the wine be so good? <laughs> yeah, okay. Nice. The guns of Illyria. Magra has received alarming news from the neighboring province of Illyria, the lowborn convicts Toiling in the Illyrian mines have revolted against their noble masters. For the first time in many long, peaceful years, commoners have taken up arms. Worse yet, the insurgents had guns and gunpowder, and no one knows how they got them. Gunpowder weapons were banned throughout the Empire as soon as they were invented, the Lords deemed firearms dishonorable and unfit for the nobles. Even Legion soldiers are forbidden from using them. But now gunshots were echoing through the mutinous uh, Illyrian mines. The Imperial Legion was deployed to quell the riot. The Legion has slaughtered the rebels without mercy and the uprising choked to death on its own blood before it had even begun. The south of Elyria is now a forest of gallows. The convicts' corpses were left swaying in the wind as a warning to any commoner who might dare to take up arms. Not good. Although the rebellion quickly succumbed to the Imperial military's onslaught, many Legion soldiers and death officers were slain by the insurgents' firearms. The steel armor was no match for bullets. 
all Imperial Overseers soon issued public reminders in the provinces. The punishment for owning a gunpowder weapon is true death by execution. But the Empire is still restless, still anxious. Somehow guns found their way into commoners' hands, if only for a short time. Could gunpowder and lead one day endanger the old ways of the Empire? Authorities of Magrafir were at unrest may spe soon spill over here. Due to the double tax, peasant farms and industrial manuf manufacturers, uh, manufacturers are facing harsh times. The province's wealth is steadily declining. Not good. But the discontent of the commoners is still held back by the eternal lot that demands that they accept their suffering. Okay, wealth of Magra drops further down. Uh, still somewhat good, but it drops further and further down. Mm. Sucks. A friend in need. I arrive at the office one fine morning and find a visitor already sitting there. It is Thomas Guerra. Hmm. His heavy uniform already bears a captain's chevrons. He looks nervous, his fingers drumming a forbidden staccato on the desk. Staccato on the desk. <laughs> oh, hi, Thomas. What's up? Uh, to what I owe this pleasure. Thomas shrugs. I got bumped up a month ago uh, to the rank of captain. Apparently the Legion is running short on decent officers. And then I realized why there are so few of them. Wish I knew my direct superior was gonna be our very own Commander Otten. Oh, uh, I see. Listen, buddy. You and me will always help each other out, right? Uh, not quite, I betrayed him several times, uh, abandoned him several times, but uh, okay, uh, what's on your mind? That Arknian bastard? Well, he challenged me to a duel for the second time. He cut me down a month ago. That was my second lesser death. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, that, that's terrible. Uh, for what? What happened? Why did he? Why is he dueling his own subordinates? Isn't it uh, unfair? <laughs> I know I never told you, but it was tough. The gods, they, uh, they spoke to me there in the hereafter. I, I know, I see. I know what you're talking about. Uh, right now, I got something worse to worry about than matters of a soul. See, Otten, he remembers me from the time at the academy when I stood up to him at the party. Now he's gonna kill me again and again until my true death comes. So it's a duel. That's Otten's way of having fun with his subordinates. My god. This is so bad. Like, Otten is acting so dishonorably. Oh. Bren, I am asking you as a friend. Will you be my second at the duel? I know Prefect Elborn doesn't like any kind of sword fighting. It's one of the old traditions he wants to put a stop to. But if I show up without a second, he won't just kill me for a third time, he will dishonor me too. In the Prefect's opinion, dueling is a lawless tool of noble tyranny. Elborn sees duels as an outmoded way of circumventing the legal system. Yeah, that's uh, what I talked about earlier. He sees the court of honor and any duels uh, as a lawless thing. Elborn would be crushed to learn that one of his judges had been involved in a duel. Thomas signs heavily. I know this is hard, pal, but I've got no one else to turn to. All the boys in the Legion fear Otten like the plague. You are the only noble who can support me in this. I know this duel won't be the end. Our great Sir Otten will find an excuse for a third duel before you know it. That will be my last one for sure. Oh my god, Thomas, I'm so sorry. Really. I know I, I wasn't that great a friend to him, but this this is serious, like, this is a matter of life and death, literally. This is terrible. I don't think Thomas did anything to deserve this. Thomas rolls up the sleeve of his uniform, two pitch black lines encircle his forearm. He is desperate. One on one against an Arknian swordsman, he is doomed. I'm sorry, um, according to the rules of... Uh, Court of Honor, uh, a duel must be uh, observed by a third party, by some nobleman, preferably the chairman of the Court of Honor. Why uh, isn't it happening here? What the fuck? Mm. The law forbids dueling. But if I refuse to show Thomas my support, my friend's spirit will be broken before his body can ever even be killed. And I can do shit. I can do shit, my friends. I can't stop the duel from taking place because Dorio Sotan uh, doesn't even know me, I guess. 
I don't have uh, any favor with him. Uh, the only time we've met, I guess, was when I tried to stop him from uh, catching Sophia. I obviously cannot decline Thomas request because bond of friendship, like this is serious, this is not some uh, ball when I uh, abandoned him to dance with a beautiful lady, like I said, this is a matter of noble honor, this is a matter of life and death. All I can do is to agree to be his second. And he will be in danger and Elborn will be pissed. Well, an off is an off. Supporting my friend is far more important than uh, pleasing Elborn or uh, upholding the law. Thomas, um, I'm deeply sorry to hear about your circumstances, but of course I would not abandon you to such a cruel fate. I am sorry that I've been a shithead to you before, but uh, now I will make it right. I will be your second in this duel. No matter what. I... Uh, my, our friendship will not be broken. As the two of us walk to the palace ruins, I finally have time to ask Thomas for more information. Uh, what was Otten's excuse for challenging him to a duel? Here's what happened. Uh, Otten told me to head to a nearby village with a squad of Legion soldiers. Sulmina, it's called. Uh, okay, where it is? Um, ah, there it is. Uh, Sulmina. A large, prosperous village in the east of Magra. Mm -hmm. Uh, the villagers refused to pay the Archduke's tax, said they already paid the tax to Gaius Tempest's man. He is the overseer, so the law says the tax is his. So Otten told me and the lads to string up a couple of the rowdiest peasants and put their houses to the torch to teach the rest of them a lesson. Jesus. Otten is basically a Nazi by this point. <laughs> he is acting like a Nazi. <laughs> so we went there. And let me tell you, buddy, I did enjoy the Legion to start handing people and burning villages. So we decided to have a word with the village elder first. The locals soon realized that what was going on, losing money is one thing, but losing a spare life is worse. They hemmed and hawed and finally found enough cash to pay Archduke Melanthus. Which means we came back to Anizot with nobody dead and all the money for the treasury. But uh, then the commander summons me and claims I didn't follow his order, which means I also slighted the honor of a noble Arknian who is my commander, so he challenges me to a duel. First, that's a shitty excuse. Second, Thomas did the right thing and he is punished for it. How unfair. You know what, I'm not the first brand and I'm not the last. Any officer in religion could not end up like me. Otten does as he sees fit, with no plans to stop. He is a commander, he is a noble of a sort, he is an Arknian, we are just dirt under his boot. Who is gonna rein him, rein him in? Okay, we reach the side of the duel just before dawn. By the half-crumbled wall, I see a tall figure clad in a thick cloak, Doris Otten, High Commander of Magra. His fingers drum impatiently on the pommel of his sword. Thomas dutifully bows to his commander. What an honorable guy Thomas is. Like he's, like I said, he's, he's so much better as a person uh, than me. He's so brave. He's so diligent, in, even in the face of uh, danger and lesser death. You are late, Captain Guerra. Why should I have to wait for you? You've insulted me again already. And who is this? I've seen your face before. Anyway, don't have time for this. Make haste, I have other duels today. The commander's second appears from the shadows, a young nobleman quite an eager to oblige his betters. <laughs> As seconds, uh, we have to ask the duelists if they are ready. Without a word, Otten draws his sword. Thomas nods anxiously, clearly ready to face another death. Oh my god. Oh my god. The two bow ceremoniously and adopt a dueling stance. The difference between them is apparent as soon as they begin. Otten's sword seems like an extension of his arm. Thomas pales before him like a clumsy child who has grabbed father's sword for the first time. This is horrible. This is no court of honor. This, this is a disgrace. If I don't know if a proper court of honor uh, would give uh, Thomas a better chance at surviving this, but it's at least it would have been a proper court, like an honorable affair. This is just a cold-blooded murder. What an insolence. Uh, everything about this battle shows that Otten treats this duel as no more than entertainment. The Arknion moves around so rapidly and gracefully 
My friend can barely defend himself against a flurry of strikes. For the smallest moment, Autumn tones down his assault and for the first time during the duel, Thomas makes a riposte. Effortlessly, Autumn deflects Thomas' blow and then retaliates. His sword sticks from my friend's shoulder. As soon as I see the blade drew blood, I shout for the duel dance. Please, please, stop, stop, stop. The death of the insult has been paid in blood. The loser of the duel is ready to offer his apology. Please, sir, high commander, the fight must stop. What? Is some human trying to teach me the laws of a duel? I am an Arknan of the Autumn Dynasty, there is no one here who can teach me the ways of honor. His sword flashes and stabs my friend straight through the heart. A wet red spot begins to spread across Tom's shirt. My friend stumbles backward. He drops his sword. His knees buckle. A wheeze and other than a cuff full of blood. His bright eyes grow dim and dull. I'm sorry, guys, I'm, I'm choking. Poor Thomas. Poor friend. Slowly his body disappears. His blood-stained clothes, his sword and his footsteps in the dust are all that remains. Otten hands his sword to his second, who is ready to wipe it down. Well then, that pitiful human will face another duel very soon. Let's hope he fights better during his last life. <laughs> when your friend is reborn, tell him my exact words. You are disgrace to the whole noble estate, Sir Otten, I think for myself. The Arctian walks away, calm and composed, his second in tow. All I can do now is gather my friend's belongings and bring them to his house. Unless I intervene, Thomas is doomed to meet his true death soon. To an Arctian of such rank and birth, my authority means nothing. Is there any way I can help my friend? The only good thing in all of this is that we improve our relations with Thomas because we uh, supported him uh, through this whole chapter. We've been with him. Okay, Elborn, you know what? Well, screw you, Augustine. Screw you. What was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to abandon my friend? In such a situation? <sighs> I try to help my family. Elborn is displeased. I try to help my friend. Uh, not even help. I can't help him here. Uh, support him. Uh, show him my support. As, as my oath of friendship. My fucking oath of friendship demands. What do I get in return? Elborn is displeased. The case against Otto. The day after my meeting with Thomas, time slows to a crawl. As I examine one case after another, I cannot help but think back to my friend and his fate again and again. There is a knock at the door. Elborn has decided to pay me a visit. Hello, sir. I have a matter to discuss with you, Branta. Would you mind if we will take a walk? It's getting a bit stuffy in here. Okay, he wants to discuss something in private, I guess. We leave the prefecture, and soon the two of us are walking down the noisy streets of the Brass District. The wind is strong today, the grey sky mercifully overcast, the people around me are bartering, buying and stealing eagerly. The streets are full of craftsmen and factory walkers. Merchant carts squeak as they roll down the streets. The head of the prefecture looks more worried than usual. Brante, do you recall how we talked about the tyranny of the nobility in the province? Dorosotan, the High Commander of Magra, is on a murderous spree. He challenges his subordinates to a duel for the slightest infraction and slaughters them with impunity. If our law is unable to protect anyone from the violent tyranny of the Arknians, who will ever respect the law? It's time we put an end to this. And how do you propose we do that, sir? As long as I am in charge of a prefecture, establishing the rule of law over people of all estates and titles is our most important task. But people like Oton stand in our way, people who think themselves above the law. We need to prove them wrong. I have been informed that Oton has pressured your childhood friend, Captain Thomas Guerra, into a duel. And I believe Sir Guerra has sought you assistance in private, am I right? Yes, sir, and I believe you were displeased that I uh, honored my oath of friendship and helped my friend, am I right? So, young Brankte, I believe that to be reason enough to entrust this case to you officially. What case, sir? 
If you find yourself doubting your abilities, know that you are my best candidate. No other judge would have the courage to prosecute an Arknian. And I trust you more than any ordinary judge. I spoke to your father, but even he would not accept this undertaking. He says your family has worked too hard to be ennobled by the sword, to risk it all now. <laughs> but you bear no such burden, do you? Okay, I'm completely lost. What is Elborn's deal? Why does he think uh, I am not burdened with my family getting ennobled by the sword? What is his line of thinking? <laughs> it's really hard to understand, guys. Okay, okay, let's hear, let's hear him out. As it stands right now, sentencing an Arknion to even the smallest punishment is unthinkable. But drop by drop, water can wear down any stone. We will make our way to Otten, but we must do it slowly and carefully. What we need is a perfectly prepared case. We need you to find enough evidence and enough witnesses who are willing to testify in court. But I'm sure you realize that even this won't be enough to force an Arknion to go to trial, don't you, Bran? We have to change the unspoken rules in our city in province. We'll start with lower ranking people, lower ranking cases, and little by little we will establish rules that even highborn nobles will have to obey. Basically, this case against Otten, about him murdering his uh, subordinates, will dominate the rest of the chapter. One of the possible endings uh, for the chapter we can get is Otten is sentenced. If uh, we get high enough justice and stay loyal to Elborn and get uh, protector of the people, which we already have, or evidence against Otten, we can convict him in a court of law. That's what we can do, if we are lucky. However, if we uh, push for justice too uh, strongly, then uh, justice will get up to 10 and the rebellious citizens will take control of Anzot. Okay, um... Elborn stops. Standing in the middle of the street, bustling with life, he points out a number of commoners hurrying about their business. Just look. All these people need to know that there is such a thing as justice. The law must apply to them all, no matter their lot, whether suffering, praying, or ruling. They need to know they can rely on us judges to enforce the law against anyone and everyone. I see where Elborn is coming from, okay? I am counting on you in this, Brand, Sir Brand. Eh? From this moment forth, I will prosecute again a case against the High Commander of Magra, a highborn Arknian from an ancient dynasty. This is a pivotal moment in my destiny and my career. I can rise higher than ever or plunge into obscurity and ruin. This is very dangerous. Okay, so uh, I must say right now my first concern is about Thomas and his fate. Uh, I guess he represents our best chance at getting on the indicted, but uh, we have to make sure he will leave to speak at trial. Ensuring his safety is the first thing I must do. Can you help me with this, sir? You are right, Brenta. We need Thomas Gerard to see this to the end. But remember, this is about more than just your friend and his fate. This is a matter of law and justice for the entire province. The peril to Sir Thomas's life is great indeed, but if you openly defy the, fire, the High Commander right now, your standing will suffer accordingly. You could find a safe shelter for Sir Thomas away from Otten, but if Thomas remains in the city, he might be of use when you begin looking for Otten's other victims. I realize you are looking for a way to rescue your friend, but right now we must all use caution, lest our entire cause suffer. What say you, Bran? What is your plan? What is my plan? I can't convince Thomas to leave the Legion because uh, I I had to strike uh, some deal with Otten, I guess in the previous scene, and uh, I can't do this and I can't rescue Thomas uh, peacefully. I can let him roam freely, exercise caution and refrain from getting involved, involved in Thomas' fate, at least for now. It will secure my job position, but uh, Thomas, it will worsen my relations with Thomas because, uh, well, I guess... Um, I guess Thomas will have other <laughs> uh, matters to concern himself about than me, like he he would be afraid, he would be desperate, I understand. Have Thomas taken into custody? Okay, uh, Elborn likes me enough that I can get Thomas framed and taken to prison to keep him safe from another duel. Not only will it damage my reputation, but uh, okay, if this is your idea of helping Elborn, right? To, to get my best friend in jail indefinitely. Because uh, who knows how long this will take, this whole case. It can take uh, months, maybe years. 
and for all this time Thomas uh, is supposed to uh, rot away in jail. Okay, and what is it about send Thomas uh, out of Anizot? Mm. I pressure Alborn to give me a squad on gendarmes to ensure that Thomas is well guarded. I can do this because I made a promise to Elborn. It will damage my career and willpower and uh, it will not rescue Thomas, he will, be, he will simply be in hiding. Mm. And it will damage my career up to three. So one step away from uh, dangerous position and uh, total destruction of uh, my future. Nice. So I have made a promise to Elborn. Uh, in return, uh, he is pissed at me that I helped my family. He is pissed at me that I helped my friend. And now, uh, because I have maintained good relations with him and supported him, my two options uh, connected with Elborn is to put Thomas in jail or uh, send him out of Anizot and, uh, uh, and do something. <sighs> yeah. I must say I... Uh... Well, not me. Uh, Bran is somewhat pissed at Elborn right now. I understand that uh, there is uh, a way in this game where you support Elborn through Hell and High Water, and uh, this way you basically uh, sacrifice your career and the reputation of your family to establish strong justice in the province. Uh, this is the way of uh, like noble revolutionary. But Bran Branta is not such a man. He is not ready to put his best friend in jail, and he is not ready to just send Thomas uh, away uh, uh, with no understanding of what, what to do next. I am very pissed that Elborn can't uh, offer me anything better after all the support I have shown him, but I guess my best bet, as harsh as it sounds, is to let Thomas roam freely. Uh, I think so, considering all our options. Uh, to observe Thomas without interference for now uh, would be the best course of action. <sighs> yeah. I must not put the entire cause at risk just to save one man, I guess. Because my options to save them are very shitty. <laughs> to save him are very shitty. In all honesty, Brandt, I have to admit you're right. We can only hope Sir Thomas has what it takes to fend for himself. For now, this course of action should keep my position as a, your position as a judge safe and secure without drawing the ire of the high nobility. Well, we should get back to work. Begin preparing the case at once. I send a note to Thomas addressed, uh, a brief request to visit me at the prefecture as soon as possible. As he returns to my office that evening, uh, I understand that I have not seen him for just one day, but he looks a decade older. Oh man, this is gonna be painful. Look, Thomas, mm, Otten is on his way toward being punished for his crimes. I am building a case against the High Commander of Magra, and one way or another, uh, through the Court of Law or the Court of Honor or some other way, I will see it through. I will see Otten punished for his evil deeds. But. I need evidence to prove his guilt, and uh, right now, sorry, I am in no position. I have neither the authority nor the connections to give you any meaningful protection. Look, friend, I, I'm deeply sorry about all this. You can count on me anytime. Uh, you can. I will. I will try. I will find a way to help you. <sighs> Look, man. I, I just repeat it. I'm really sorry. I I will do whatever I can. I will see this bastard punished. But my only connection is my prefect, and he offers me nothing but shitty options. <sighs> Please fend for yourself for a time. Be careful. Thomas hunches over his exhaustion showing and gazes at me dully. Just taking on a case against the Tarknian means a lot to me. I agree to bear witness. Do whatever you can. Life goes on. I'll go back to the Legion and do all I can to stay out of Otten's way. I will be fine. 
Thomas shakes my hand. It takes him a significant effort to rise from his seat and walk out the door. I remain in my chair deep in thought. My friend is still in danger. Thomas' superior, Commander Dorio Sutton, threatens to wreak a terrible vengeance upon him. At least my own position is safe, but that's uh, a bad... Uh, that's a bad... Uh, compensation. My relations with Thomas is worse than the once again, back to indifference. Like Thomas... Thomas believes he is all alone in this. I feel terrible. Uh, Elborn doesn't offer me anything good. <laughs> Any good options. I have only shitty options. <laughs> Shit. Yeah, my career is fine. I'm a judge. Yeah. Nice. I have been entrusted with a case against the noble and influential Arknian, the high commander of the province. He is accused of violence against his own legionaries. Sucks. Sucks, 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 sucks. Eh? The road to the top. Mm -hmm. We have a good enough career and we are not branded by dishonor. Okay. What is this? My actions result in well-earned progress up the professional ladder. I am expected to have a glorious future in the field of law. I receive more and more invitations to balls and noble gatherings. High-ranking nobles wish to befriend me. I imagine they will, because uh, if they don't, I might uh, just sue them like I did this guy, La Villa. Okay, sorry, you can't demolish this die work. Haha. <laughs> mm, okay. Powerful people have been keeping a close eye on my ascent. Today, a personal letter from the magistrate Remy Elberman is delivered to my home. Sir Brandbrante. I would like to further our acquaintance and discuss certain matters over a glass of Illyrian, Illyrian wine, I guess. I will expect you at my estate this afternoon. Okay, accompanied by servants, I walk down the imposing uh, and flood of Elverman's granite manor. Gold tapestries, stone carvings of ancestors' profiles. Compared to this luxury, my own home seems tiny and cramped. Well, noble of a sort, what do you want? Elverman greets me by the fire. At home, the influential ruler of the city seems peaceful and amiable. amiable. Judge Brandt, pray come in. I'm delighted to see you again. Servants, pour us some wine. Please have some brown. Oh, thank you. Sir, so, uh, mm, mm. a very delicate taste. Well, your most recent deeds call for much more than a glass of Lyrian. I'll be frank, after our first encounter I had my doubts about your trustworthiness. But now you have proven by your actions that you have a future. Uh, it's nice to know that Alverman doesn't hold it against me uh, that uh, I legitimized the Lesser Quorum Gazette. I guess he uh, uh, acknowledged, acknowledges uh, my success at forging peace between different parties of a quorum. Mm, sorry, I digress. Okay, I sip the wine, it is excellent as expected. Uh, thank you for your high opinion of me, Sir Magistrate. Uh, I strive to serve the Empire and the Prefecture faithfully and uh, in the manner I deem proper. I am overjoyed to see that the younger generation honors our traditions and cares about the fate of our nation. We have that in common, you and I. <laughs> we are not so different, you and I. Many see me as merely power-hungry, but why would power itself be of interest to me? My family is already powerful and wealthy. Its position is secure for many generations to come. No, my friend. I need power to save the city that has been entrusted to me from a grave threat. What grave threat, sir? Take a look around. More and more insurgents are preparing a bloody uprising among the common folk. The new faith compels people to defy their lords. The foundation of the empire has been shaken. What do you think? Will a new world be born from this? Well, as a matter of fact, I uh, have listened uh, to the words of new faith preachers and no, sir, I don't think the new faith is a legitimate faith. And as about uh, these bloody uprisings, I guess you're referring to the news from Illyria. I see. Those who hoped to see this new world to be born happened seem to have forgotten that our world was created in accordance with the twins design. And we are already on the cusp of provoking thereof. Elverman is becoming uh, truly incensed. 
Apparently the fate of the Empire is not just a sh subject of idle chatter for him. You must understand, Brante. I have seen plenty of starry-eyed idealists yearning to change the world, and I know where those dreams lead. We have trespassed against the Sacred Order and now we are on the verge of the wrath of the gods. I am a nobleman and a citizen of the Empire and it is my duty to save this world from ruin. I disagree with Elmerman, I think changes are necessary, but uh, let's hear him out, let's hear what he has to say. While the Overseer and the Archduke persist in the futile squabble, futile squabble, a danger is growing. It's time to take matters into own hands. I'm seeking allies. People who will stand by my side to protect the city and the Empire. I hope you have the courage to become one of us. Just what exactly uh, do you mean, sir? Uh, sorry, my boneheadedness, but... Uh, mm, please explain yourself. Okay, let me speak plainly. Prefect Elborn is, alas, among those who are dragging us toward our destruction. He aims to subject all estates to the tyranny of the law. He seems to have forgotten that the law must serve the good of the Empire and be a mainstay of order, but Elborn wishes to disrupt this order. He is pushing for the Lowborn to gain power. What do you suppose will be the first thing they do once they get it? They'll take up arms and destroy this country. Elborn has doomed himself to a shameful fall. Meanwhile, the city needs someone at the helm of a prefecture who is bound by honor and concerned about the fate of the Empire. You can be with someone, Brante. I am trying to hide my feelings behind the glass of wine. I am listening, sir. If you prove yourself worthy in the future, sir Brante, I can promise you the post of a prefect of Magra. I hope you see it not only as a chance to elevate yourself, but also to make your mark on history. Side with me, and together we will save Anizot from the uprising. If you remain Elborn's servant, you both will lose and fall together. Okay. If we agree, uh, we will get uh, patronage of the powerful, tremendously improve our career, and even improve justice. I guess because uh, um, uh, we'll get more authority to do our job as we see fit. But naturally we will betray Elborn because uh, Remy is Elborn's enemy and uh, wow, that's a deal with the devil if I ever seen one. That's a shady deal, that's a very evil thing to do. Okay, uh, we can refuse and protect our family, uh, it will drop our career once again, or we can refuse and protect our career if this will drop our reputation, so any refusal is uh, met with some consequences. Wow. Wow. Okay, look guys, I have no delusions about this. This is clearly a very evil deal to make. Uh, and uh, it uh, might be called dishonorable, actually. But Bran Branta is desperate like now. And he is very pissed at Elborn for all the strife that was um, between them uh, recently. And that Elborn did not help him in, in any capacity to um, uh, rescue Thomas. Uh, definitely rescue Thomas. Uh, all he... Definitely rescue Thomas. Sorry, sorry. M my tongue uh, is tight, right? My tongue is tight right now because this is very stressful. Okay, um... Bran is sick and tired of feeling helpless. He did not work his ass off uh, to become a noble of the mantle and the judge just to jump from one foot to another. Like, he wants to have power. Finally, he wants to have power to do some good to good people of the Empire. I thought I would get this power if I sided with Elborn, but I did not. All I have with Elborn is constant danger for my friends, a constant danger for myself, and a very shitty solutions, like I put Thomas in jail, what the fuck. As evil as this action is, let me be damned, but... Uh, thank you for your... General Soffer, Sir Magistrate, you can count on my loyalty. You have my word as a nobleman. I agree to be your ally in uh, 
noble cause of defending our province. Splendid. I am pleased to see I was right about you, Brante. You will make a marvelous prefect. But we have much work to do before we can accomplish this. To our alliance. We clink glasses. I'll see to your promotion, Bran. If you have any trouble, don't hesitate to contact me. But in order to make you the prefect, we need to know all of Elborn's plans. He trusts your family. I am sure it will be no trouble at all for you to obtain a better understanding of his affairs and gain access to his personal papers. I'll expect weekly reports from you. Oh, ho, ho, ho. we are becoming a full-blown villain right now. Yeah. Elborn uh, thought badly of us that we disrespect the law, that we uh, support uh, ancient traditions that he disagrees with. And Brand Brand basically said, okay, Augustine, then let me be evil, and sided with Elborn. <laughs> oh my gods. Go back. Go on with your work and maintain your position at the appropriate level. Remember that your every move is being watched. I hope you won't tarnish yourself by taking your cue from Elborn. But everything is much simpler once you've chosen your side once and for all, isn't it? No, it's not, sir, but uh, thank you for your concern. I live in Verman's estate. My carriage slowly drives through the busy street streets of Anizot. The sun is shrouded in clouds of dust, a sandstorm is approaching. We made a deal with Remy Elverman. We betrayed Elborn to whom we promised things. <laughs> Wow. Justice improves slightly, career improves like, whoo, we are future prefect for sure. More importantly, this uh, choice uh, locks this road to us. We can't uh, bring Otten uh, in a court, into a court of law if we betray Elborn. We can, however, summon Otten to the court of honor for his misdeeds. We actually have to betray Elborn for this to happen. We have to support uh, noble institutions Elborn uh, opposes. And we have to maintain our career uh, at high enough levels. Uh, also, if uh, our career is too high and we uh, made a deal with Remiel Verman, uh, it might trigger Knight of the Serpents. The supporters of Archduke Milanidas will take over the city. Okay, I think from now on our goal is to bring Otten into the Court of Honor. This is the right thing to do, this is how it is done. This haughty Arknian should be punished uh, in a proper noble way, by the judgment of our ancestors. Through the judgment of our ancestors, sorry. Patronage of the powerful. We earn the favor of someone very powerful indeed. A deal with Elverman. We secretly sided with the magistrate and promised to him help in the struggle against his enemies. Oh my god, that was an evil thing to do. A very, 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 very evil thing to do. Okay, the procession to the tree, another squabble between old faith and new faith. Basically, they are arguing about uh, who uh, has the right to um, serve a. Uh, holiday uh, mass uh, in the Temple of the Silver Tree and uh, the new faith uh, is all about yeah, commoners have the right to be there too and all faith are like no, 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 only the priests are allowed to enter on this sacred day blah, blah, blah Okay, uh, Father Leonard says that the Inquisition must know that the new faith does not seek to challenge or defy the twins we are merely trying to correct the mistakes of those who came before us Okay the new faith's numbers have swelled of late. It cannot be stopped now. Okay. I think it's a good time to end this episode. And uh, we will proceed later. Uh, as we will try to bring this uh, shithead Otten to the Court of Honor. Until later, guys. Take care. Goodbye.